Welcome to Do It For The Gram, an Enneagram podcast with your host, certified Enneagram coach, Milton Stewart, where we do it for the Enneagram, not Instagram. We make moves to improve our lives and those in our community. So this year, I got a lot of different things I have planned out to come throughout the year. And what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with the thing called passions. Um, each type, the passions, the vice, the emotional patterns. I'm going to break that down a little bit, but I wanted to start with that because this year I also wanted to teach um, the subtypes of each number so that um, people can get even more granular and specific on their specific type and their pattern. And really to understand the subtype, you need to understand the passion, vice slash emotional pattern. So in these episodes, in this series we got coming up, it's just going to be about the passion, the vice, and the emotional pattern of each type. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. Let's go intro music. So you may be wondering, what is the passion, vice, or emotional pattern of your Enneagram type? Because you may have seen the different things and maybe not fully understand. It. So what is the passion, vice, or emotional pattern? The passion, vice, or emotional pattern all represent the same thing and are used interchangeably throughout Enneagram teaching and books. The passion, vice, or emotional pattern is a specific habit that each type has that flares up hardcore. Unfortunately, the passion, vice, or emotional pattern can be so automatic or native to the way you interact with the world, you may barely notice it's happening or not even recognize it when it's happening. You may say, that is just the way I am, or I am this kind of person without really examining why you react the way you do in certain situations. The Latin root word for passion is passio, which means suffering. The connotation of passion now is more of an intense care or enthusiasm for something, but the root meaning of the word passion is actually suffering. That is why it is used in many Enneagram circles and especially those who built the foundation of Enneagram years and years and years and years and years and years ago. The passion of each number is something we all are suffering or must endure through our lives. It does not mean suffer as in being excruciating pain, but more of a habit that seems to trap us and keep us and can lead us into pain within our lives. The Latin word for vice is vitium, hope I said that right, which means flaw, defect, fault, or error. Emotional pattern is a more new age term that I believe describes it well and makes it easier to communicate to people in our generation. I do not want to abandon the word passion or vice because they make a statement that this emotional pattern we struggle with is something we must work on. And it's not just a jolly old emotion. So throughout this, I will use them interchangeably throughout this whole episode so you can get a grasp on the language as well. Why is the passion, vice, emotional pattern important? Because the Enneagram is a growth tool, a growth tool. Many times people get caught in just getting the knowledge of it and seeing some of the patterns, but do not apply it to themselves in a way that helps them grow. When you start to notice and become aware your, of your passion, you realize when you may be moving towards unhealthiness and your type structure may be about to take over and react in an ad- automatic habitual behavior instead of choosing the action you want to make. Disrupting your vice allows you to make better choices for your life and just maybe get the things you really want out of life and not settling for a knockoff, counterfeit, faux, or fake version of it. Quick, easy example. If you are looking for affection, attention, and love, but you settle for sex, which will never hit the mark of what you're really longing for, that is more of an extreme example, but this is the case for many areas in our lives. The power of the Enneagram is the internal work. Internal work is not like external work which is usually fast and caught up in what others think, say, and do. Internal awareness is slower, quieter, more challenging, and way harder than external work. Why do you think so few people intentionally change for the better? Unless something chaotic brings it to their attention that they must change. 
It is not easy, but if you are here, then you must be one of the people working on engaging in the challenging journey of internal work. Recognizing your emotional pattern is important if you want to dive into internal work and truly change your life for the better. All right, so you're probably wondering, what is my type's passion? So the passion, vice, or emotional pattern of the Enneagram 2 is pride. This kind of pride is the overinflation or deflation of themselves. So before we get started, quick reminder that when I use the Enneagram, I use it as a growth tool. And so I use it for reasons to actually help people grow. And so that means in order to grow, you have to get better at something. In order to get better at something, you have to look at the things that you may not do that well or you may struggle with. So I use it in a way to actually help people improve and not to glorify all of the wonderful things we, our false selves, seem to inhabit in this world. So this episode can lean towards the negative side, kind of. But the idea behind it is actually to help you grow and to actually benefit you. So here we go. Because when we talk about the passion of vice and the emotional pattern, it is something that we all must work on in our individual types in order to be better. And so this is something we struggle with consistently. What is my type's passion? The Enneagram 5. The emotional pattern, passion, or vice for the Enneagram 5 is avarice. Oh, I love saying that word because I don't say it much. And so it just sounds cool. At first reading this word, I was like, what in the world is avarice? Avarice means in the Enneagram terms is an intense desire to guard everything related to oneself combined with the automatic detachment from feelings. Type fives are usually introverts, but not all of them for sure. The vice of avarice makes fives even more withdrawn and quite reclusive. That is when fives hear people use words like antisocial. The emotional pattern of avarice also makes fives say no automatically when asked to do something. Many times they have not fully processed their positive impact of being there or what they could actually get from going. They usually only see what they would lose by going, which is energy, time, and so on. Avarice also makes fives even more logical, but without the inclusion of emotion. Even though fives probably think the most logically naturally of all the types, they forget that they are still emotional beings, and that part of them needs to be considered in their logical outcomes, not just for themselves, but for others as well when they communicate and make decisions. Remember, our passion, vice, or emotional patterns gets us the opposite or counterfeit version of what we really want. Generally, for fives, they want an intense, thoughtful connection with someone so they can really display what they have been processing for a while and be able to be really honest without feeling judged or incompetent. Avarice does not allow fives to get that because it removes them from finding the people who are able to keep up or listen to their vast amount of information. So how did I get this passion? It all starts as a child. Many times fives felt their lives were intruded upon, especially their personal resources like time and energy. So that made them become quite guarded to protect their inner resources and their personal stuff as well. So what can I do when I notice my passion of avarice is rearing its ugly head. When the vice of avarice infiltrates the five's mind, remember to make some slow, deep breaths. Remember to take some slow, deep breaths. If you're no, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Avarice can make five shut down their emotions and go straight into their heads for processing and straight to respond no or withdraw. When you notice that avarice is happening, ask yourself, Why am I really being overly guarded right now? Or why am I being guarded right now? So guarded. Once you answer that, then ask yourself, could I contribute positively to this or could it benefit me to share more or say yes? I want fives to look to engage instead of back away because fives have so much to offer, but it's hard to do that when you have not engaged with people to share that information. I know it can be a lot for fives, I know it can take fives a lot of energy to do certain things, but work on being less guarded and combat avarice. You can choose to say no, but you actually want it to come from you, meaning that you've really assessed the situation, the whole situation with all three centers of intelligence, your head, your heart, and your gut. We want an authentic answer and not an automatic response from your avarice. Not only are people missing what fives have to offer, but fives are also missing out on what others have to share and give. Well, that's all I have for this episode. So fives, don't let that avarice take you out of actually really experiencing and enjoying life. 
connection, the transference of knowledge and data, and that deep connection. I'm almost at my goal for Patreon. I am at $70 as of this recording, and I'm trying to get to $100 so that I can pay for a full-time podcast editor, which would help save me time, which I can make more content and more resources. The Patreon community also gets more contact with me and more in-depth um, research into uh, some of the things I'm studying on the Enneagram, some of the places I go, some of the things I do in my life, and some more inspirational things um, when it comes to personal growth. And you also have a really close connection and you're able to communicate with me on a quicker, easier basis if you need anything. So you can go there at patreon.com forward slash do it for the gram. My event is coming up very, very soon. And unfortunately, a lot of Enneagram events, I do not see a lot of Enneagram fives. I would love to see some Enneagram fives in my event and have some really good, deep, uh, stimulating conversations about the Enneagram as I teach the foundations to the Enneagram. It's a workshop and I really want to help teach um, a strong foundation so that people can know where and how to grow uh, within their Enneagram type and understand the system and how it works um, from a foundational level. If you are looking for coaching, consulting, or teaching, don't hesitate to reach out to me at milton at kaizencareers.com or go to the website and hit the whole little contact part at the bottom and I can get back to you within 48 hours. We can talk about what it looks like to maybe help um, you personally, your organization, your company, whatever it is um, by using Enneagram, which would be great. But besides that, Enneagram fives, if your emotional pattern, vice, or passion of avarice is invading your mind before you react out of strong fiveness and like, nope, nope, and withdraw, take some deep breaths in your nose and out through your mouth slowly and ask, why am I being overly guarded? And can I contribute to this? And then do it for the gram, the Enneagram, of course, and make a healthy choice. I'll see you next time on the next episode. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.